In this video, I'm going to be answering your questions about Ascension, a Subnautica fan film. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, our first question is from SR who asks, where did you put in the time capsule you need that to launch? I originally planned to have a scene with the time capsule actually deploying. Uh, in fact, I modeled out the, uh, the module itself. But in film, you can't actually show every single action that happens. And so for the final sequence, it just didn't work and didn't flow. And so I cut that scene. Hitam Rusty Man asks, how did it take, I think he means how long did it take, uh, to make with those HD quality, it must have taken a while. It absolutely did, uh, spot on there. Each frame of each sequence took about roughly four to eight minutes on average to render out. And you can imagine a six, seven minute film, uh, how many frames would go into that because there's 25 frames in a second. So uh, I would just leave my computer running for like 24 hours at a time just trying to get those frames pumped out. Speedy Mouse and Aspect settings are similar questions. How long did it take you to make this fan film? So it took about two years um, just after I finished my high school and I decided I wanted to make a part two. I originally planned it to be like a short three month project but you know it just balloons like all of my projects do and it ended up taking about two years of full-time work so that includes like concept art, um, storyboarding, just planning things out in my notebook, making sketches. So yeah, a big investment of my time into the film, but um, yeah, completely worth it. Flair1077 asks, is there going to be a next part? I hate to break it to you, but this was the last and final entry uh, for me. There might be short snippets. I'm thinking of doing like quick 20 second uh, mini stories, if you will, animations. Uh, it's a potential. Zio asks, is this canon related to the story? Is the brother the playable character? So both me and Toby are based off Riley Robinson's story. Um, that's why we're on the Aurora. But I wanted to make it a bit unique, not just copy the original protagonist one-on-one. -on -one. So that's why I mixed in a bit of the Degassi storyline as well at the end of Unknown Waters. So great question. No, it's more a unique character that was inspired based on Riley Robinson. GT100 asks, question, why was there no Reapers in Unknown Waters? So simple answer, GT100, uh, I had a really tight deadline and I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to portray such an iconic character properly and do it justice. P Sniper TF2, great name, asks, are you planning on making films about other game stories? There was something so special about Subnautica and I'm really not sure if any other game is able to capture that. It was just so immersive and breathtaking. I haven't played a game that even comes close since, and so a game would really need to captivate me, um, like Subnautica did, in order for me to make a full fan film based off it. I do get inspired by video games frequently, however, so some of my art and future shorts will be based off some games that you guys will recognize. Lightning Lamb asks, what inspired you to begin filmmaking slash animation? What was your first ever serious project? So what inspired me to begin filmmaking was actually as a kid just during school holidays watching guys like Film Riot, uh, Corridor Digital, Rocket Jump. It was just crazy seeing guys with such low budgets make amazing stuff and I knew I wanted to explore uh, this medium of filmmaking. In terms of uh, animation specifically, like the 3D world, uh, I remember watching Tron Legacy on a school bus on the way to school camp and that was what kicked off my interest in animation, just seeing those awesome CGI scenes of the light bikes, um, in particular this one shot which I'll show where the main character gets on a light bike for the first time and you can see all of the components of the bike just assembling in slow motion. Uh, that particular shot is what kicked off my interest in 3D and I knew that I wanted to pursue this as a career and make awesome art. In terms of my first ever serious project, I would say in year nine, uh, we had a subject called learning for life. The final assessment task was really open, which means um, the students could do whatever they wanted. And me being into film and 3D, decided to make a short film based off Iron Man, which I'm gonna play for you guys right now. And please hold the laughter till the end. This is embarrassing stuff, but hopefully you can see how far I've come. Dark Assassin has many questions, as he says. First of all, which softwares did you use and are they free to use it? So I used 
Maxon Cinema 4D for my 3D, Redshift for rendering, Adobe After Effects for compositing, and Premiere Pro for my final edit. They are not free to use unfortunately, but Cinema 4D has a student license if you are at high school or uni, so that is an option to start learning and that's what I did. Secondly, will you be doing a behind the scenes on how you made this video? Yep, I've made about two of them I think, um, and you can check that out right here, I'll link that for you. Third, would you like to teach me all of this? Absolutely. I've got tutorials planned around the software that I'm using and this channel itself is going to be transitioning to more 3D focused content. I know there's been a bunch of random stuff in the past, um, some Nautica based mainly. But yeah, I'm really going to double down on the uh, Cinema 4D and Redshift stuff in particular, maybe some Unreal Engine as well. So um, get keen for that guys. Seitan asks, what is your dream? My dream is to be a freelance 3D artist. Uh, which would mean I'd be able to work from home and give me more time to spend with my future kids uh, as well as reduce transport times it would be great um, just to wake up as I do now and just head to work uh, so that is what I would love to do uh, for my dream job yeah so this is a schoolmate of mine and uh, I'm not gonna answer that one Jiao Jip asks the devs watched the film they absolutely did uh, even from the start when I was posting stuff on the Subnautica Reddit, Donya, who is their community manager, shared this information with the rest of the team. Um, and they already know me from Unknown Waters as well. So I was actually fortunate enough to have the film shouted out by them. Um, and a couple of the devs also are uh, giving me their encouragement as well on how much they love the film. Xenosts has some questions he asks. First, how to make something that good? Thanks. Um, a lot of patience, hard work, dedication, and discipline. Second, how much time to make the film? Again, two years-ish, roughly. And third, the brother of your main character is your real brother. Absolutely. He's my oldest brother. His name is Joseph, and an absolute legend if you're watching this, Joe. Thanks, bro. Laxon asks, how did you make the animations? I mean like this, referring to 246, which is this scene where the Cyclops powers up. So this was made using the Cinema 4D MoGraph module, which is a arsenal of tools specifically tailored to motion graphics, um, stuff like manipulating clones. So I used an effector with a radial fall off. That allows you to basically make a pie sweep and wherever this pie sweep starts is when the clone will actually pop onto that engine. And then for the liquid powering up, that is a sweep object for the pipe. And then I created a smaller one inside of that where I can animate the offset and for the outer one, I put a glass material, and for the inner one, I put this uh, emissive ion looking material as well. Next question is from Holio Holio. You sound Aussie, are you one? So yeah, I am. I'm born and raised in Sydney, Australia. My parents are of Indonesian descent, but I've grown up here all my life, and so I am a typical Aussie kid. I love wheat bix I love Vegemite. I've got a bit of that accent as well. Ike asks, did you ever think you would make a sequel to Unknown Waters? No, I did not. It was only after Unknown Waters did really well that I decided, hey, there's a market for this. The Fire Dragon asks, where do the music and sound effects come from? Did you make them yourself? Did you find them online royalty free or paid for them? Did you ask slash hire someone to make them for you? Uh, I got most of my sounds from Epidemic Sound, which is a subscription based, um, but allows you to use all of that commercially. And uh, for the score, I got my brother to create an original um, composition for that so big props to him he made the entire soundtrack from scratch uh, inspired by Ben Pronti and Simon Chylinski. Redstone Lighting asks would you ever think about printing and selling any of the 3D models used in these films? That's a tricky one because even though I created the models it is based off Unknown Worlds intellectual property so uh, I don't think it would be right for me to sell even though I created and put in all of the work to texture so yeah unfortunately I won't be selling any of these models or putting them online. That brings us to the end of this Q&A and my content for 2021. I'd like to thank those of you who left the question as well as each and every one of you for your support these past two years. It's been an epic adventure creating Ascension and I honestly couldn't have done it without your support so thank you very much. I'm super excited for the year ahead. I've got big things planned, a new logo animation, a complete channel rebrand and I'm going to be doubling down on that 3D related content. In the meantime, have a Merry Christmas and I will see you guys in 2022.